You're listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. In this podcast, we'll hear a message from Pastor Robert. Well, I'm just, uh, I, I always share what is on my mind. And I come in the office this morning, felt great when I got up. Came in and got here about 7.30. Knelt down in my office. Began to pray. And thank the Lord. And I've been crying all morning. So get over it. <laughs> if I blow snot all over you, that'll yeah, work. It's, um, I love you. I do. I appreciate you. appreciate you coming. This morning on Christmas Eve. Most of all, the King of Glory appreciates you showing up. Yeah. Amen. Uh, wow. Didn't expect this. Hmm. When you've been around sickness the whole week, when you've been around people that are hurting, make you realize how blessed you are. Come and travel with us sometime hard. Yeah. Stand with me this morning if you're able. Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 16. Never have felt like I'm uh, very good at delivering special messages. Uh, We'll. We'll wade through it here on a special day. And it came to pass in those days, hard to see the when you're getting older and you're crying, right? It's, uh, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor in Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that While they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And when I read that, and I've read that many times in my life, when I read that, I couldn't get away from it. And I titled, I even made a note that said possible title. So I titled this message, Great Joy, which shall be to all people. It's available to all people. But you gotta receive it. You gotta activate it. And we'll talk a little bit about that. For unto you... Is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Good will toward men, and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said 
one to another. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Pastor Aaron, would you take the microphone to Pastor Rita, please? Don't worry about them kids crying. They can't cry louder than I can preach, right? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we want to say, first of all, happy birthday, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you yes. for being willing to come, for being part of the plan even before the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Even before the foundation of this world was laid, you were part of the plan. Thank you. I just stood here and thought Mary and Joseph traveled a long way, about 90 miles to get to Bethlehem. But you traveled a long way yeah. from heaven to earth That's to right. get to us, to save us from our sins. We needed a savior. Father, I say so many times, I bow before you this morning. What an honor, what a privilege it is that you have shared the good news, not only with the shepherds, but with us as well. Thank you that we have heard the good news. So Father, I pray that you would anoint our shepherd this morning. Anoint our pastor, every word, every phrase. And Father, help us to not miss Christmas mm -hmm. in all of the busyness yes. and all of the wrapping and the cooking and everything that we have to do. Help us to be present at Christmas. So Father, we know that you are the guest of honor. You are the unseen guest, but one day we will share Christmas with you. So Father, I pray today that you have your way in this service and be honored. May all of us celebrate you this Christmas, and not only this Christmas, but 365 days a year. So anoint our pastor and let it fall on good ground and bring forth good fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. When we read this uh, text, it seems to me like when, when we read this, it's like heaven was saying, have a Merry Christmas. Have you ever felt heaven just say, have a Merry Christmas? And after preparing, I think that's what took place in my office this morning. I feel like the Holy Spirit was saying, have a Merry Christmas. I've got my family here with me, my church family. What else do we need? The Declaration of Independence was drawn up by our forefathers. It says we possess certain rights, among those being life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Who among us does not wish to be happy? Who among us? But what the world has to give us will not bring the happiness that I'm talking about. And I'm talking about the joy of the Lord, do you hear me? Who among us does not want to have, it's not only when we're on the mountaintop. As I said on the couch, with a young lady last night and I said to her and her husband, I said, Amanda, you got a million dollar smile, a million dollar smile. And what she's going through has not taken away her joy. Huh. How easy it is sometimes for us to lose our joy over something, as my father-in-law would say, what will it matter in a hundred years? Chew on that for a while. This may not be the Christmas message you came to hear. Who among us does not wish to be happy? Christmas time, parties, food, food, food. Did I mention food? Church plays. What an incredible children's play that we set through last week. Yes, incredible. I went to visit a man last week and he's here today and he was sick last week, but they watched live stream and he said, one of those beautiful little angels with, she had glasses on and she just sat down on the floor. I said, that was my granddaughter. 
I asked her what she did. She said, I got tired, Pappy. I was tired. So we got parties, we got food, we got Christmas plays. And I'm sure we all have gifts. And by the way, thank you all uh, for the cards and the gift cards and the uh, pictures and different things that you gave me and, and my family. Some places won't even allow a Christmas tree. I was reading a little town out in West that they made the city hall take down a tree last week because it symbolized religion and it was offensive. Huh. Is it the Christmas tree? Is it the parties? Is it the food? Really, there's one tree, one tree that we as believers ought to boast about and rejoice in, which was this tree was fashioned into a cross. The Christmas tree really doesn't mean a whole lot. But in 1 Peter 2 and 24, who is his own self bear our sins and his body on the tree. Wow. Matthew chapter two, verse nine and 10. When they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy, the star. I was reading an article yesterday where a young college basketball player, a freshman in college, was shot at some gathering in the middle of the night, played for Michigan State. In the middle of the night. Probably someplace he shouldn't have been. And in the article they called him a star. I don't know the young man. Maybe I'm just reading between your lines, but I read it every week. Athletes and Hollywood, they call them stars. Stars. I don't call them stars. It appears that the star that they're talking about here was luminous. It's not unlikely that during this journey, they lost sight of it after they had become, begun their journey from the east. And it kind of goes with you and I. When we see that star, when we see Christ, when he's born into our lives, his spirit, he lives within us and we begin that journey. And oftentimes we can lose sight of that star. Sometimes it's dark in our life. Sometimes we go through some struggles and we go through some battles and we lose sight of the star. And if that's you today, all you gotta do is come back to him. That's all you gotta do. I'm here to tell you, you'll go through some difficult seasons. There'll, there'll be more cancer show up. There'll be more death show up. It'll come to all of our families, darkness in one way or another. But we've got a star. Do you hear me? He's not an NFL player. He's not a college basketball player. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, you just keep your eyes focused on him. Come on, somebody. If he's brought you through a dark place, somebody ought to give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. If he's been good to you, if he's brought you out of depression, if you lost sight of him, but then all of a sudden you caught a glimpse of him, again, give him a shout of praise. Have you lost sight of the star of Christmas? It's not the tree. Man, it is not the packages underneath that tree. It is not the food. You heard me say it last week. I do not remember one thing I got for Christmas last year. But 40 years ago this year, I unwrapped a package at the Enterprise United Methodist Church and there it was, the King of Kings, the Savior of the world, the one that died on the cross for me and gave his life. I give him praise. Hallelujah. 
believe. You lost sight of the star. Listen to the English Standard Version in John 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus was speaking in the part of the temple known as the treasury where candles burned to symbolize the pillar of fire that led the people of Israel through the wilderness. And I wrote down wilderness. We've all been through some wilderness times. And if we've not, we will all, if the Lord tarry, go through some wilderness times. Do you hear me? In this context, Jesus called himself the light of the world, the pillar of fire. It represented God's presence. It represented God's protection and it represented God's guidance. I don't know about you, but there is only one star. There is only one light of the world and his name is Jesus, Bob. He'll take you through the wilderness. He'll protect you and your wife through the difficult times. He'll give you the pre his presence. He'll give you protection and he'll guide you. There's been times in my life I didn't know which way to go, but I'm glad I didn't go looking for an NFL star. Are we looking for the king of glory and the lamb of God, the bright and morning star? Give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. <laughs> Woo! This star Jesus brings God's presence. He brings God's protection. He's my protector. Woo, glory to God. Been a long time since I got my cup filled up, brother, I'm telling you. I don't give a hoot about Santa Claus right now. Do you hear me? Jesus brings God's presence and he brings God's protection and he brings God's guidance. Is he the light of your world? Oh, you say, I know about him. I didn't ask you that. I said, is he the light of your world? When you get up in the morning, is he the light of your world? My oh, God help us. If you go back to John chapter one, verse four, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Why is this life that was in Christ the light of men? Because death brings eternal darkness. Eternal darkness. And only Christ's eternal life planted in us will keep us alive in his new kingdom for eternity. Romans chapter six, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Wow. Light of the world. The world was waiting on a miracle. We need a miracle in this world today. We need a touch from heaven. Do you hear me? Christ is eternally alive because he is God. Emmanuel. God with us. When I say that, man, I get the Willie Burgers all over me. Emmanuel, God with us. God, God Almighty with me, with us, right here today. The music was beautiful. The flowers are gorgeous. But don't miss the star of the show. Don't miss the star. Christ, my goodness, he came to earth to offer mankind the hope and the light of his eternal life. He'll never die. And because he lives in me, I shall not die. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Chad Fletcher, 48 years old, and it grieves my heart with his wife and his children. But I know without a shadow of a doubt that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord and he's experiencing his first Christmas with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you think for a second, don't you think for a second you're above sickness or death knocking at your door. My friend, you don't need to be ready. You need to get ready right now. Do you hear me? You don't need to wait till later. You need to be ready right now. Somebody say amen. amen. But Jesus gives it to only those who want it. This gift can't be bought. This gift can't be earned. But he gives it to those that want it. I'm not talking about just salvation. I'm talking about joy. 
Joy every day of the week, no matter what comes your way, no matter what happens, when I'm sitting on a couch with somebody that's struggling and not just her, I can look back through the years of many people that's went through storms and the storm didn't change their demeanor. The storm didn't knock them off the mountain. They had the joy. The word says uh, joy to all people. That should mean at all times. And I'm not there yet but I want to be there. Amanda said to me last night, she said, I can't wait till this passes so I can minister. And I looked at her and I said, you're ministering right now. Right now, who have we ministered to? Whew. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he better move on. Jesus gives it to those who want it. Do you want it? Do you want it? Now I'm talking about salvation. Do you want it? Isaiah 1 and 18, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how far you've went from God. There's a light. There's a light that cares about you. Luke chapter two, verse nine and Verse 10, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And here it is, which shall be to all people. I want the joy. I want the joy of the Lord. And no matter what circumstance, Bob, you're going through a difficult time. And I prayed with Bob in the foyer. But I'm telling you, even through this difficult time, you can still have joy of the Lord. The devil can't take it from you because he never gave it to you. Do you hear me? I mean that. You by watching on live stream, no matter what's going on in your life, you can still have joy. If you ask Christ into your heart, he is your joy. Do you hear me? They concluded that the expected king had been born and immediately commenced their journey to Jerusalem. And I had this thought this morning. 40 years ago, I started my journey to the new Jerusalem. How about you? Stand with me this morning. They were under a heavenly guidance. Hear that. Listen to me. Stay focused. <laughs> I'm the one that struggles to stay focused. Stay focused with me. They were under a heavenly guidance. When you got Christ in your life, the light, no matter what you're going through, you're under a heavenly guidance. In Psalms chapter 32, verse eight, it says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. And then he says, I will guide thee with mine eye. Sometimes we gotta wait. Sometimes we gotta wait on that guidance. Do you hear me? Man, I don't like to wait on nothing. I'm telling you, I, I drive through, I, I go over by McDonald's and I'm looking at the line. And if there's more than two cars, I'm, I just drive on. I go underneath the bridge over here at 79 and I get up close to Bob Evans and I can look behind Tudors and if they're wrapped around, I, I don't need a Mary B. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Right? I don't like to wait. My wife says, man, he's just terrible. You've never heard me preach on patience because I ain't got there yet. <laughs> so listen, there's times we gotta wait. God's word said in Isaiah 40, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles and they shall run and not grow weary and they shall walk and not faint. God will guide those who desire to find the Savior no matter what's going on in your life. Even in a time if the light seems to be withdrawing, the wise men and the shepherds, I'm just thinking because of the terrain and they see the star, they see the light, but at times I would say that light disappeared 
And there's times in our lives I can look back and say, man, I struggled seeing the light. But that's where faith comes in. We walk by faith and not by sight. Do you hear me? How many's ever had to walk by faith? Man, you just couldn't see it, Rick. Darlene, you just can't see it. But I'm telling you, the light's still there. Hang on to it. I want to close in saying something like this. The greatest joy that you'll ever have in your life is when someone comes along the side of you and walks you through the scriptures and tells you how you can give your life to Jesus. Friend, the Bible said, whosoever shall call upon his name. There's only one name under heaven that man can be saved. His name is Jesus. I can take you to a place where it happened 40 years ago. Honestly, I can't. Can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. No, that's a lie. It was bacon and eggs. It was real good, honey. I appreciate that. <laughs> I can't remember a lot of things, but I can take you to Enterprise United Methodist Church and I can take you in the, and walk through those doors and show you where I was sitting in the last pew and the preacher walked me through the scriptures. And I got up and I took 12 steps to an altar and I knelt down and I opened a gift and it fit. I didn't have to take it back and I still remember it. And I don't think I can ever forget it. It changed my life. And it's changed multitudes of people's lives in here today. Why wouldn't you not? Why wouldn't you not wanna open up Jesus Christ? My goodness, and bring him into your life. Every head bowed and every eye closed. My goodness, I got two more pages, but I'm done because the Lord's ready. If you're here this morning, your head's bowed and your eyes closed. It's just between you and the Lord. But I believe, you know, some, some preachers may make little comments about the way I give an invitation, but sometimes they need to mind their own business. <laughs> thought I'd share that. Uh, I think when you lift your hand and your pastor's standing here, you're making a public, you're making it known public. But then you need to tell somebody else. But right where you're at, I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to drag you down here. I'm not going to single you out. But I ask you, do you have that joy of the Lord? Does that light live within you? Jesus Christ that loved you so much that he died? Right where you're at. You say, well, pastor, I don't know a lot about the Bible. Guess what? I don't know a whole lot about it. But I know that he loves me and that he died for me. And there's one way to heaven and that's to ask him to forgive you of your sins. Young people, my goodness, don't think you've got many years because you don't know what tomorrow may bring. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ and you'd like to, just slip your hand up high. Just slip your hand up high. Is there one? I have a hard time believing that this morning with a crowd this size. Yes, I see your hand, ma'am. Yes. Yes, yes. Somebody else, somebody else. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. I see your hand, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody else. Somebody else. The greatest gift that you've ever received. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, you that raised your hand, would you look at me right where you're at? Take someone by the hand beside of you. Would you do that? Would you do that, ma'am? I remember shaking your hand when you came through the door and the family that you're with told me that today was your first time here. You see what happens when we bring them? They get their lives right with God. So pray this prayer out loud and mean it from the bottom, the bottom of your heart. Lord Jesus, today I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Lord, would you cleanse me? Lord, I'm sorry. And I repent. Turn from my old lifestyle to follow you the best that I can. 
the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you welcome them to the family of God? Thank you for listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. 